What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3D model. This week, we're going to be making a small military command headquarters. I say small because my intention was to make this like one of those small video game buildings like in Age of Empires or Command and Conquer. I know I say this in every video, but I wanted to make something different for this week's video, and I came across a random picture online of a Command & Conquer, the video game, and I used to love that game as a kid, specifically Red Alert. Not sure if any of you have played it, but I spent countless hours building bases and attacking enemies on it, so I thought it'd be a lot of fun to make a small military building for this week's video based on that sort of art style. So while looking around online for Red Alert images, I came across this image, which is from Soldiers Inc. Not sure if it's a computer or a mobile game, but the art looked really awesome and I wanted it based off of this image here. Basically combining the two ideas into one. Now I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to do this or where I wanted to place the helipad. For example, I started with the helipad on one side and I ended up moving it to the other. So we'll have to experiment with some of the shapes until we find something that we're happy with. The thing I love about this art style is that there's so many details going on and there's so many things to look at, but the details themselves aren't too detailed, if that makes any sense. It's kind of like low poly, but still has lots of details. So this one should be a lot of fun to create and a little bit different than the things we usually create on this channel. So to start this one off, I need to start blocking out all of those main shapes. I'm not going to worry about the small details for now, we'll do that later down the road. I just want to get the larger shapes into the scene. And of course using that image I showed earlier as my reference, so we're just going to be blocking out the main shapes in this image and I'll be copying them over into my scene. And I'm sure a lot of you already know, it's really easy to get caught up in modeling all of those details right off the start and it can honestly just drag out the process so much longer than it really has to take. And I usually try to complete all of these models on this YouTube channel in under three hours, just a modeling portion. That way it just gives me space and time for all the UVs and all the video editing. But this one did go a bit over that, I think it was around four hours. But to keep it low, to keep the whole process as short as possible, we just need to not worry about those details as much as we can and just worry about blocking everything out and then we can refine them afterwards. Also, if you like these types of videos and you want to see more random 3D models, please consider subscribing to the channel or even liking the video. And as always, if you want to see this whole video in real time, I will be uploading this with the working files to my Patreon page and you can find all of that in the link in the description below. Alright, so let's just continue blocking out some of these main building shapes and then we can move on to some more fun things. Alright, so the blocking out process is going well. Now I just wanted to make a quick note, just here's a good example of what I was talking about earlier. I'm adding some steps to my helipad, but I'm not exactly sure where I want this helipad to fit, but I don't want to like obsess over it right now and just worry about it. So I'm just going to quickly just add in a few rectangles as those steps and just jump onto something else temporarily and then we can come back to it. And hopefully this will just help me not drag on the whole process about or obsess about where I want this helipad to sit. I can just move on and we'll come back to it and maybe it'll make a bit more sense once I get a few other objects into the scene. So next up is just moving on to those windows. And this is also just something else I wanted to make a comment about. If you wanted to keep this in really low poly for a video game, which we are going to do, we're going to not bevel every edge. I do smooth some objects and add some subdivisions to a few things just because I thought it would look a little bit better. But the majority of the objects we're going to keep low polys. And if this was going into a video game and you really wanted to cut back on those polys for performance reasons, the windows is another thing that you could cut back on. So I add a few edge loops just to delete some of those faces to add those, just extrude in those faces for some windows, but you could simply just paste on some squares or some rectangles onto the material and substance painter and maybe adjust that height just to make it look like there's a black window there and you really don't have to add any more into the geometry itself. Now we're just going to cut out some windows just for fun, but that's just something you can do. There's so many things you can do to cut back on polys if you really have to for performance reasons. So keep that in mind as we move along this modeling journey. but. I just wanted to make a quick note about that, that you really don't have to add these windows if you want to. 
All right, let's just continue blocking out a few last things and then we can move on to some more fun things. So it's always good habit to UV your objects along the way just to cut back on time rather than having to come back and rework a lot of things, which I do in these videos. That way it's just easier to follow along. But I decided just to quickly UV this one object just to save time. So all I'm going to do for this, just because it's very low poly, is I'm just going to do an automatic UV since I know it's going to cut it down the edges that I want it to. And then all I'm going to do is select those edges and I'm just going to right click and go to cut and sew and down to move and sew. That way I can just stitch together those faces. I don't want any cuts down those edges. It's just the quickest way that came to mind just to quickly UV this object. And like I said, it's just going to save me a little bit of time down the road. Now, I ended up adding a few edge loops to create some little gun slots on the top of this building, similar to the reference. But I ended up removing this and actually changing it up and adding more of like a tower on the top. But like I said, we're just experimenting along the way. So we'll have to change stuff up as we go, depending on what we think will look best. All right, so I went ahead and cut out a few extra windows on my building, and now it's time to add a little bit of extra detail to our scene. And I'm gonna start off with those railings that go around the side of my building. So I'm just gonna do this by simply adding in a cylinder and we can start blocking out what that railing looks like. Now, before we go ahead and start duplicating this railing all around the building, I wanna make sure I have everything finalized and I know I wanna have one extra tower on the back for that helipad, basically like a, almost like a lookout tower, I guess you could call it. So we're just going to quickly add in a few extra cubes and we can block out what this building looks like. It's basically going to look similar to the other building we already have in our scene, just a smaller version of it. So we're just going to add a few edge loops, cut out some holes and keep it fairly low in polys. And let's not forget about some doors. We need a way to enter our building. So we're going to add a small door on the side and our main door on the front. Now at the time I was imagining a little turret or a gun on the back so there would be a little level that I'm building up right here that would be stairs that you could walk up to but this eventually turns into my staircase that leads up to my helipad which I move on to the other side of my building so we're just playing around with shapes like I mentioned earlier and but we do end up changing a lot of this around later on in the video. So now that we have that back part blocked out and I know roughly how these buildings are going to fit together we can jump back to our railing and just finish that off with a few extra cylinders. And also these railings are another great way to cut back on polys. You can make this original cylinder much lower in polys, like even six sided or five sided if you have to. And you can just smooth out those edges so it looks rounded. That way you just have less poly since we're duplicating these so many times to create all these railings. All right, so next up is our fence. Now, all we're gonna do for this is just create one small fence piece and then we can duplicate it a bunch of times to create all the other fence pieces in our scene. So all I'm going to do for this is create a simple plane for the main chain link fence. We're going to add a see-through material to that later on in Substance Painter. And just a few small cylinders for the bars or poles that sit around this plane. And then for the barbed wire on top, we're just going to add a helix shape and we can just increase it so it wraps around a bunch of times to look like some barbed wire. So we're just basically going to simplify it. We're not actually going to add the spike pieces to the barbed wire since it's going to be very small in our scene, but you could always add that extra detail if you'd like. And you can also cut back on a lot of polys by making this helix shape much lower in polys. Similar to all of our poles, like I mentioned earlier, you can just start off with that original shape being much lower in poly and it'll just cut you back on a lot since we're duplicating it a bunch of times in our scene. So if you look at our reference photo, there's also some barbed wire pieces that sit on the ground with some metal kind of rectangles. And this is going to be pretty straightforward. We're just going to create a few rectangles to create that metal kind of spiky piece. And then for the barbed wire, we can just take it from our fence just to save ourselves some time. So I went ahead and just pasted a few more around our building and now we just need to add some more barbed wire right below our railing. So I'm just going to once again duplicate that same barbed wire we created on our fence and I can start just positioning those just along our wall. 
And let's not forget about our railing at the front of the building. This one's just gonna be a little bit different. I thought rather than just reusing the same railing we already have, it'll just make it more interesting to look at having a different shape similar to our reference photo. So once again, adding a few rectangles, we can make a simple fence. Next up was adding more barbed wire, this time to the top of our towers. So once again, just creating a helix shape, but this time we're just gonna use a deform modifier so I can just bend it to a nice circle shape. And then we can position that on the top of our towers. All right, so next up was making all of the sandbags. Now this is one of my favorite parts. I really think it adds a lot to the whole scene, to the whole model. And this is another area that you can drastically cut back in polys if you really wanted to. So I just create a simple cube shape and start just adding a few edge loops just to change the shape of it to look more like a sandbag rather than a cube. But I end up just adding a smoothing effect to it just to make it more rounded. I thought it would just look better, but this is definitely something that you don't have to do if you really have to cut back on polys because we have a lot of sandbags in our scene. And if you just start duplicating a lot of these smoothed objects, you can quickly start accumulating a lot of polys. So just wanted to make a note of that. You can also delete different faces that are hiding and overlapping with one another, but we don't do any of that. We just really quickly model one of these sandbags. And then once one sandbag is complete, we can go ahead and start duplicating it all over our scene. And I'm gonna start off with this one ledge up here, this balcony area on the side of my building. All right, so next up was adding some more small objects to our scene. And in our reference photo, there was that small vent or AC unit, not sure exactly what it is, it looked like a small vent sort of object just on that ledge and in a few other places actually. So what we're gonna do is just recreate that simple shape. And once we have this small fan complete, we can go ahead and duplicate it in a few other areas just to populate our scene with more objects. And while we're here, we're also gonna create a small door similar to our reference photo. That way you have a way to enter and exit this small balcony. All right, so now it's time to grab our sandbag we already created and we can start duplicating it in a few other places. And I'm gonna start at the very front entrance on our front level where our front door is. And I can start just duplicating the sandbag to create a small barrier basically behind that wall we created earlier. And then while we're here, we can also take our fence and just duplicate that a few more times to create some more defenses on the front of our building. So in our reference photo on the helipad building, there's that tiny little front gate. And I really like that idea of the little stop sign and the gate that goes up and down. So I wanted to recreate that in our scene as well. So we're just gonna simplify it, create a simple cube and we can block out what that front building gate looks like. And of course, let's not forget to add a bunch of sandbags as well. We can just spread them out all over the front of our entrance. All right, so things are coming together. Next up is just adding that gun that sits on the top of our tower. Now I've really simplified this. It's basically just a bunch of cubes that are just squished together. And I didn't want to overcomplicate this. It's such a small piece in our scene. I didn't want to spend too long making an overly complicated gun. However, if you did spend some time adding more cables and buttons, it would look really cool for sure. Now I did get sidetracked here for some reason, not really sure why my brain decided to quickly jump onto the helipad. But as I was looking at the gun or working 
at it from this angle, I saw the helipad and it didn't feel right being on the back right corner. For some reason, I thought the left would just be very boring since I've been mostly looking at the right side of this building. So quickly put the gun on hold and I jumped to the helipad and just move it to the other side of my building and just refine some of the shapes to make it fit better to the building itself. All right, so now that I was a bit more satisfied with how the helipad was sitting, I can jump back to that gun object and just finish it off. So I just needed to add a few barrels, a few cylinders, and then a few other random objects just to make it look a bit more interesting. Once again, keeping it very simplified and just straightforward. I didn't want to overcomplicate it. And then also grabbing a few of those sandbags and just duplicating them along the front just to create a little protective barrier on the front side of the gun. All right, so next on the list was moving to our lookout tower or the radio tower or whatever it is, that little building that sits beside our helipad. And I wanted to add some sort of radio tower, sort of antenna-like with satellite objects sitting on the very top of it. So once again, not overcomplicating it, we're gonna simplify these shapes. I'm gonna start off with a cylinder and we can just block out a simple satellite object. And once that's in place, we can go ahead and add a few cylinders to create some poles. That way the satellite has a place to sit. It's kind of like a little radio tower pole-like object. And then we can add a few simple cubes and cylinders for other various random objects that sit on the very top roof of this lookout tower. Now, like I mentioned a few times, I'm not overcomplicating these shapes. I just want to simplify them. They're going to be very small in our scene. So there's no point adding little bolts and screws onto everything. We can add all those tiny details into the materials if you really want to. So let's go ahead and continue blocking some of these shapes out and we can quickly wrap up our radio tower. So it looks like in our reference photo, there's some sort of netting that sits right below where our top balconies are. I'm not sure if it's like a protective netting to keep people from climbing up or to help people from falling off. Either way, it was a cool little object and it's different than putting a simple like pole on the top as some sort of railing or something. So instead of doing that, we're going to do this idea that they have in this reference and we're going to create some sort of netting. So very similar to how we did our other fence, we're going to do the exact same thing, but create a smaller fence object that sits on the bottom as some sort of netting object. All right, so next up is adding some lights. We need to be able to see around our building at night. So what we're gonna do for this is just add a simple cylinder as that main pole, and then a couple cubes as those main light objects. Once again, simplifying these shapes, we want it to be very simple since it's gonna be very small in our scene. And then we're gonna use an EP curve tool to draw out a couple of points for a curve. We can turn that curve into a sweet mesh to create some wires that basically attach all of these lights together. And we're basically just going to loop them from light to light and all the way up to the satellite. So it looks like there's some wires that are all connected that help power this whole building. So while attaching all of these wires, I quickly thought it would be fun to add a tiny little security camera. So all we're going to do is just block out a simple rectangle as a security camera and I can position those in various places around my base. So on the top of some of the lights and on the corner by some of the front doors. Just to add an extra level of security. All right, so like I mentioned earlier in the video, I decided to change a few things up. Originally, I had the gun similar to our reference photo sitting at the very top of our building, but I thought it would make more sense just having some sort of radio tower. I was having like temple vibes by looking at it with this gun on top, and it just didn't look right for some reason, or I just thought we could do something a bit better. So I wanted to copy that same radio tower we used earlier, and I can position it on the very top of my main building. And then all we have to do is just connect some of the wires and reposition some of those satellites. All right, so next up was just jumping back to our helipad. I want to add a few more details since it's looking a little bit bare right now. One of the things I wanted to add was some sort of like loop. So I just wanted to add a torus to make it really skinny as some sort of protective ring or barrier that kind of sits around the whole helipad shape. 
So I'm just going to copy over some of the other structural objects we created earlier and just position them around just to make it more interesting to look at. And then I'm also going to add a few tiny cylinders that sit around this whole helipad shape. And my idea was just to add some sort of emissive light to this object later on in Substance Painter. That way we can have some red lights that sit around this helipad. I also quickly made some stairs that go up to the pad itself, but I ended up changing this whole idea up later on when we get to the UVs. It just didn't look too good. I just wanted to fill it up right now with something and then we can always refine it afterwards. Because at the moment they need to jump off the helipad, so they need a way to walk off of it. Alright, so we're slowly approaching the end of the whole modeling process and at this point I just want to start populating the scene with a few extra objects just to make it more fun and interesting to look at. So one of the things that first came to mind was adding a few boxes, so simply just add a few cubes and we can create some simple box shape and start duplicating those around the scene, as well as more sandbags. We can never have enough sandbags, so I'm just going to start duplicating more to create more protective barriers that sit on various levels of this whole military building. All right, so next we're just adding some more protective barriers. I really love the idea of those big concrete blocks that sit on the very front of this building in our reference photo. So I wanted to create something similar. So we're just gonna add a simple cube, make something that looks similar in shape, and we can start positioning those on the front just to add another level of security. All right, so I went ahead and just created a few extra small objects, like a few extra small boxes and barrels, and I just duplicated a few extra sandbags and other objects we already created just around our scene, just to make it more busy and hopefully just a little bit more interesting to look at. So now one of the last objects we need to add is that large green gun that sits on the very front of our base. So if you look at the reference photo, there's that large gun and we wanna create something similar. Now once again, I know I've been saying this throughout the whole video, but I'm going to really simplify this whole shape. I don't want to overcomplicate it. The gun itself is, I mean, it is a large gun, but it's still very small in our scene. So adding little tiny bolts and screws, even though we do add a few bolts, it's not really going to be seen too much. We can get away with adding more details directly into the materials later on in Substance Painter. So what I'm going to do is just block out a few cubes and cylinders, just create some simple shapes. We can start building up this whole mini gun like object, and then we can position that right on the front of our base. All right, so that's basically all of the 3D modeling and all of the objects we added into our scene. Now I did end up adding a few extra tiny things and duplicating a few extra objects, and I will go over that right now along with all of the UVs, and I'll show you how I prepared the model to go into Substance Painter. All right, so here is the Command HQ model in its finished form. Now, like I said, I did end up adding a few tiny things or just duplicating a few objects along the way. So really quickly, I'll just go over some of those. For example, some of these sandbags I just duplicated a few times, as well as these vents that we created earlier on the side. I just went ahead and duplicated those on the back tower, on the top tower as well. Also went through and added a few barrels. I'm not sure if we went over that in the modeling, but just a tiny simple cylinder shape. Just to add a few extra objects. And these generators, just more cubes. So just a couple of extra objects. And one other thing that I didn't show in the modeling video was just these lights. So these are just very straightforward. I simplified it. As you can see, they're actually technically hovering. They're magical lights. But to be honest with you, they're just simple cylinders and I wanted, they were in the reference photo and I thought they would be actually important to have in the scene on the sides of the buildings, just so you can put some spotlights out and you can catch people running around, I don't know. But there were a few extra objects like those that I decided to add into the scene. Oh, and one other important object was the cylinder. So later on in our textures, we in Substance Painter, we're gonna add some emissive lights. I wanna have some glowing lights. So similar to our flight deck, for our helipad, we have these little cylinders here that we're gonna add some lights to. I decided to add some into this tower piece at the very top. That way we can just assign a missive material to it and it can hopefully have a little glowing red up here as well. So what I decided to do was split this thing up into three different groups for the three different textures applied. Now, to be honest with you, a model this size, if it was truly for a video game, it really doesn't need to be any larger than one material. But because we're just doing some cool renders for YouTube and for Instagram, I just decided to split this thing up to get a little bit more resolution out of those final renders and out of those materials. So if you look at the very first group, it's the main building and towers. Now, like I said, I could have condensed, shrunken this all down and 
really condensed all of these three groups into one. That way it only has one material, but it's not being used in any game engine or anything like that. So I thought just for fun, we'd split this off and just have more room to work with when it came to texturing. So like I said, the very first group is the main building and I made sure to straighten a lot of these shells that are on the floor in the building. I was planning to have some grid floor pattern later on in the Substance Painter, so to make sure none of it's warping or angled weirdly or having any weird artifacts or anything like that, we wanted it to be nice and straight in our UV editor. So that was really the only important thing. The second group and material is everything else in the scene, so all the small objects, so all the sandbags, these little barrels and boxes, as well as all the barbed wire and fences. I decided to throw all of that into one group. And then the last group and texture is everything else in the scene. So I have this large tower on the top, as well as the helipad on the back. And I also forgot to mention, I did redesign, I know I mentioned it in the video, but I did redesign this back staircase. I know I really quickly just threw some cubes together, but it looked very low poly and really just rushed. So I decided just to make more of a platform. And then later on in Substance, we can add some see-through mesh material on these pieces similar to our fence. And just hopefully make it look more realistic and also just interesting to look at. But that's basically how I set this Command HQ model up for Substance Painter. So now we just need to export this thing and we can jump over to Substance Painter and we can start our texturing. All right, so now jumping over to Substance Painter, we can go ahead and load in our FBX file from Maya. And everything's pretty straightforward here. We're just gonna make sure to check on that use low poly mesh as high poly mesh, since we only have one mesh to work with, and then we can bake out our textures. All right, so right off the bat, I'm just gonna go up to the top right corner to our shader settings, and I'm gonna change it to alpha blending. That way I can add an emissive channel as well as an opacity channel to our texture set list since we want to have some see-through fence materials as well as those glowing lights on our tower and our helipad we need that emissive and opacity channel so we're going to actually start off with things a bit different today i decided to use two materials that are on the substance source website they are free to download for anybody that actually has a substance account and you're paying for a subscription you will be able to go download these materials and i'll post them here on screen so you know which ones i'm using it's just a simple concrete for the walls as well as a different tile concrete material i found for the floor i thought they would be fitting in pretty similar to our reference photo. Now you don't have to go with these, you can use any material that comes with Substance. I just decided to do something a bit different for this week's video. So we're gonna start at the top of our texture set list with our texture one, which is our main walls and our floor. So using these two materials that I got off the Substance Source website, we can start applying these to our walls and our floors. Now I'm not gonna worry about dialing in the perfect color and everything right off the bat. If you do that, I find, at least for myself, it can really drag out the whole texturing process trying to dial it in perfect. So we're just gonna fill in these empty meshes with some sort of material, and then we can move on to other things and we can always come back later and refine them. Now, I know I'm kind of going against what I just said about not adding too many details, but it was looking a bit too clean and I thought just to help visualize the other materials that I'm gonna add soon enough, I thought before moving on to our next tech, I thought before moving on to our next texture set list, I thought before moving on to the next texture in our texture set list, I would quickly add a bit of dirt and grunge. So we're just gonna add a fill layer. I can go over to the masking tab and I can just add whatever dirt and grunge effect I'd like to add a bit more blackness or brownness to these walls and floors to not make them look so clean. Now in the reference photo, there was also those green little stripes or lines that go around the towers and some of the buildings. And I thought that was cool as well. Added a bit of color to the objects and made it look like the ally, the good team that's always green, I find. So it'd be cool to add a bit of a green stripe similar to that. So that's what we're gonna do is add a fill layer. I can go ahead and just choose a similar green color and assign it to some different stripes around my buildings. And along with that, adding more variation of color would also make these buildings more interesting rather than being the same gray or beige tone. So I wanted to add a different concrete material, uh, more of a darker color, and I can assign it to those top, the edge around the very top, as well as the very bottom edge, just to add some more contrast, some more variation of color into the model.
All right, so now that the walls were looking a little bit better, we can move on to those sandbags. Now, oddly enough, I decided to go with a leather material. It just looked fitting. It looked similar to our reference and it looked a little bit shiny and and almost a little bit fictional in a way, like video game like. I don't know. It just felt fitting. So I just decided to go with that material. For the barbed wire, I just used a simple silver armor smart material that comes with substance. And then for the gun itself, to use another green smart material, some metal material that felt fitting. And I just adjusted those colors to look similar to our reference. For the concrete blocks and the metal spike things, I just used random materials that come with substance. So a concrete material for those blocks and then a rusty material for all of those metal spikes that's holding the barbed wire. All right, so next up was just moving on to my fence. Now this was pretty straightforward. I just had to make sure I had my opacity channel assigned to this texture set list. That way I can go to my textures tab, choose whatever texture I want, something that looked like chain link, and I can just drag that over to my opacity channel. And then it's just a matter of playing around with the tiling slider to make those little links look smaller so they look more realistic. And especially because we're looking at it from such a distance, it's honestly gonna work perfectly. We don't need to worry about any bump or having any more realistic metal material. And for the remaining objects on this texture set list, I just assigned various smart materials. So for the stop sign, I used a steel painted worn out material and then I just pasted on the word stop. Just a simple alpha that comes already with Substance Painter. And then for the little shack front entrance building, I just used another smart material and assigned it to those meshes. Once again, not really worrying about getting everything perfect right off the bat. I just want to fill in these meshes with some sort of material. So next up were the boxes and the barrels, and that was pretty straightforward. Just a cardboard material for the box and then some sort of wood material for the barrel. And next up was that front gun, similar to the other gun that we made in our scene. I'm just going to choose a greenish metal material, but I'm just going to make it this one a little bit more dirty than the other one. Once again, just by adding a fill layer and different masking effects to create that dirt and grunge. One of the areas in the materials I think I could have really improved were the windows. Now I just used a fill layer that was just a blue color and I really didn't work on the windows at all. I was originally planning on adding more dirt and grunge but I just completely forgot and I ran out of time since this whole model took a lot longer than I originally planned it to. Alright, so now that we have majority of those empty meshes filled in with materials, obviously we still have that last texture set list, but before we move on to that one, I thought we'd have a little bit more fun and add a little bit of dirt and grunge. This is probably one of my favorite parts throughout the whole texturing process is when you start adding in that extra dirt and grunge and that little detail. So what I decided to do is just add some simple fill layers, adding different browns and blacks, and we can start painting around the windows and around the different creases, really where all of those objects intersect with each other. So all of those faces from the floors to the walls and all those areas around the windows. So I'm just gonna start excessively drawing on this dirt a little bit more or a lot more than I originally wanted to. And I find it's a lot easier to then go in with the eraser tool afterwards and start bringing it back. So just pasting on a lot and then using the eraser tool and bringing it back using different dirt brushes. You can have some really cool effects. Now, one thing that I wish I had more time is adding different colors of dirt. I really use one main brown color. And if I had more time, I would definitely go back with like darker browns, lighter browns, maybe some reds, yellows, oranges, just different variety of colors. And I feel like it would just add a lot more to those textures. That being said, it's still really cool. and I was still happy with how it turned out. So at this point, it's just a matter of drawing in this dirt everywhere and hopefully it'll make it look a little bit more grungy and dirty and realistic. All right, so I went ahead and copied over the same concrete materials we use on our other texture set lists, and I pasted it onto our last texture set list on the top tower. So it's just reusing the exact same materials, and I just assigned it to those empty meshes. But one of the last things we have to do is actually assign that large H print on our helipad. So right now we have nothing on it. So what I decided to do is just jump into Photoshop and create my own alpha. I just basically using the Arial font, I just made a really bold, large H, exported it as a black and white alpha and imported it into my scene. And I can just paste that H directly on my helipad. All right, so now that all of our empty meshes have materials applied to them, we can quickly jump into our renderer to see how things are looking. 
Now, at this point in the whole texturing process, it's probably the most important, in my opinion. It's when you jump back and forth in the editor and the renderer and just adjust and tweak settings and colors until you get into a state that you're happy with. Now, to be honest, this could be like the longest part of the whole texturing process is this adjusting, tweaking things phase. But it's the most important, in my opinion. So I'm just going to jump back into the editor. We can start tweaking a few things and we can get this model more into a finalized state. So one of the first things I start doing is adding a large S4 on the side of my wall. Similar to my reference, I want there to be some sort of label on the side. I also decided to add a striped pattern to my front pole on my gate. And I also realized on the very top tower how I didn't have any dirt applied to the wall, similar to the other walls on the base below it. So just like we did before, I'm going to go in with that dirt brush and start painting around those windows and all the nooks and crannies. And then we can start erasing them and bringing it back as well. Just add a little bit more dirt and grunge on all those wall pieces. And also the floor was looking a little bit too clean. So I wanted to add a little bit more dirt and grunge so I can make the floor look a little bit dirtier, similar to our reference. And last but not least were the two front signs on my gate. So I completely forgot about these, to be honest. I originally assigned that same mesh material to them and I just didn't even know they were there until the last minute. So I quickly assigned a fill layer to these specific sign pieces. And for the top one, I decided to use random alphas that come with Substance Painter, like the warning and caution labels, pasting those directly onto the mesh. And then for the bottom one, I just quickly jumped on Google Images and searched like a warning sign for a military base. And I found one that was fitting and I just decided just to save that as just a PNG, drag that into my scene as a texture and I can just paste that directly onto that mesh as well. And that is everything. That is the full 3D modeling, UV mapping and texturing process that I did to create this small little military command headquarters. I really hope you guys enjoyed this week's video and if you did, consider subscribing to the channel or liking this video. It would really help me out. And if you're interested in seeing this video in real time or you want to see the full UV mapping process, all of that will be uploaded to my Patreon page along with all of the working files. So if you're interested in seeing any of it, you can find it in the link in the description below. And as always, a really huge thank you to all my patrons. I really can't thank you all enough. So thank you for your continuous support. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's video and I will catch you in the next one.